What, what, Chris Rock should have got a good joke off. If you got a good one off of Will Stuck on him, sir. Because he should have looked at Jada and said, Damn, you should have like Tupac, ain't you? That's what he should have said. He should have said, You should have like Pop. He's like, Damn, you really don't love your husband. You been trying to, you've been so in love with Tupac since he's been gone. That's your true first look. You should have like him, ain't you? I would have asked him straight up like that. And then if Will would have stuck no, that's me, that's disrespectful. If Will would have stuck me, then I'd be like, All right. Yeah, that's a. That's let me let me start off. So I kind of wanted to do the show. I asked her to do the show because uh, I see a lot of people talking about relationships online, and it's a male dominated space, a single person dominated space, in my opinion. So I'm not saying that we're dating girls by any any uh, uh, definition, any any means. We're not no no dating girls, but I think that it, it introduces a different perspective. Uh, of a, a couple that's been together for so long um, to talk about relationship topics. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, without further ado, this is this is Shonda. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna get to the topic. It was in the news that uh, G Herbo and uh, Ari were fighting. Do you know who these people are? A uh, little bit, yes. Okay, so G Herbo uh, was fighting with Ari, and pretty much. The, it introduced a new conversation about step parents being uh, involved with the children. Okay. Um, and it said, my question to you is, should parents have a say so in step parents babysitting their kids when there have been zero incidents? So I'm saying like, they ain't beat your kids ass, they ain't swung on your kids, they ain't did nothing like that. Okay. How do you feel? Let's say if, if I was single and I was dating somebody, how, how do you how do you feel about step parents and like the lines when it comes to uh, them being around the kid. Now being around the kid or discipline the kid? Just being around the kid. Like babysitting, being around. Because you you know you hear like a lot of women say, don't bring that chick around my kids. Yeah. That that type of deal. Not 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 beating the kids. We ain't talking about that. Because I don't think anybody should be touching anybody else's kids. That's my okay. point. That's my point of view. Agreed, yeah. Um, so how do you feel about step parents being around the kid? Uh, so... It depends because I feel like if if this is a serious relationship and this relationship is going to go somewhere, mm -hmm. then I don't see a problem with a step parent or a possible step parent being in the child's life. Mm -hmm. But if this is just a casual dating, I don't know if we're going to be together type thing, we're messing around with other people, then why bring that extra person into this child's life who's not possibly going to be there? Mm -hmm. I feel like that it's it's unnecessary and it confuses the kids depending on how old they are. And it's like, you don't want that revolving door in your child's life where men or women is constantly coming in and out of their life. Mm -hmm. Like kids need stability and in so many different factors. And that's one of them. Like they need to have stable people that's going to be in their life that's going to constantly be there for them. Gotcha. gotcha. So, but how do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, you kind of... <laughs> you you kind of got what I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, overall, my, my my mindset is this, right? <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of people use the whole don't don't bring that person around my kids because I feel like it's a control. I'm all out of the camera. Of I feel like I feel like it's a it's a way of controlling, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I, if you can't bring nobody around my kids, right? And I'm trying to have you had a kid. You you trying to be? I'm making you choose essentially, right? If I, if I tell you, if me and you used to break up and I say, you better not bring no dudes around my daughter, I'm making you choose. Because right. if if you can't have the dudes around her, then you have to pick, are you going to have my daughter or are you going to have a dude around? Mm -hmm. I feel like if I say that, and I don't get me wrong, I agree with you, right? I agree with you that you shouldn't be bringing anybody. Like, I, I don't want buddy that you met at the club. I know the club ain't your thing, but I'm saying, like, let's say, if, hypothetically speaking, you met a dude at the club. I don't want you bring a buddy around my daughter right, right away. Nah, right. like nah, we don't we don't move that type of time. But my mindset is like I don't understand because I see a lot of people on social media say like, um, I'm not gonna let nobody around my kid until it's serious. Like I'm about to get married. Until you put a ring on my finger and propose to me, you don't need to be around my kids. And I disagree with that because I feel like. Part of my vetting process, mm -hmm. my vetting process should be different as a parent than as a, a, a single, a single, a, person. As a single yeah. person. As a single person, I just want to know if you rock with me. Right. But as a parent, 
I'm not saying that's your kid, but we we are a, a package. Right. So I don't want to get to the point where I'm in love with you. I love you. My feelings are involved. And I'm considering giving you a ring. And now it's time for you to meet my kid. Because then y'all can not hit it off at all. And it can right. it can be ugly, right? right? You can find out that she don't really necessarily want to be around kids. Or you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like something like that. I don't want to be in that type of position. So I feel like, yes, you shouldn't bring randoms around your kids. But at the same time, if that dude or woman is entertaining you in in a way where you think that y'all are going to attempt, not even that it's serious, that y'all are going to attempt to make it serious. Well, some type of stable relationship. I I, I think it should be like that. And I, and I, I, the conversation, I want to ask you about that too. So the conversation did elevate to it. They started asking like, um... Asking about like people babysitting the kids, right? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you feel about step parents babysitting the kids? This this is like now we're in a serious relationship. This ain't no vetting process. We're in a serious relationship. We, if we ain't married, it's because we ain't getting married. It's a serious relationship. And 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 I let my girl baby babysit our child. You know what I'm saying? If God forbid we went, we weren't together. And I let my girlfriend babysit the kid. How would you feel if it was serious? If it was serious, I don't I mean I don't see a problem with it. Um because obviously, if, if there's a serious relationship, if the child and the parent and the the potential step parent get along mm-hmm. and they don't have any issues, then I don't see a problem with it. If the if the guy or woman is showing interest in the child and they bond and have that like mother father bond with each other, then I, I I me personally I don't see an issue with it. Now, if there's cases where like they're not getting along or like he's awkward around the child or the child is awkward around him or her then it's like I might be giving it the side eye a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I feel like as long as that bond is there and you know that you can trust this person and there's not going to be an issue, I don't personally see a problem with it. Mm. But yeah. at the same time, it's kind of hard because you do see things where the step-parent, you know, something happens to the child, there's a step-parent involved, and they're the only two in the house. Those situations have happened. But That's it true. makes you wonder, like, what was their relationship prior to that, though? That's the thing, though. You never know. You you you, you really exactly. never know, cause like, yo, somebody could sit here and be amazing, mm-hmm. and you you don't even know, like, you will leave your kid around them. Like, it, it's just all of the chance. Whether yeah. it, whether it, that's why I don't understand the whole like it got to be said. Like, I get not bringing everybody around your kid, yeah. but like, I don't care if you know that person for five minutes or you or you know that person for like a year. You never know until you know. Exactly. If that person is abusive, you're never going to know until that person raises their hand. Mm-hmm. If this person is, you know, one of the people that shouldn't be around kids, you're never going to know until that. And that's that's the scary part. So I, I get people being apprehensive, right? Yeah, I, I get people being apprehensive. Yeah, but at the same time, if it's a serious relationship, it feels like it's such a controlled thing to say, yo, don't bring that chick around my kids. Now, if there was issues, because I'm big on t- I'm big on this too. Leave kids out of grown folks' business. Yes. So, like, let's say if you and my 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 chick, you know what I'm saying, hypothetically speaking, got into it, mm-hmm. that ain't got nothing to do with her being able to be around the daughter because y'all don't get along. Right. Now, 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 if she swung on you and beat you up or you beat her up, I can see y'all saying, okay, I don't want my kid you with the blows. Right. But if y'all arguing, maybe y'all don't like each other, stuff like that, that ain't got nothing to do with when when my kid come over, we in here, uh, we over here, and we take the kid out, or we we throw in a birthday party stuff like that. I feel like that that don't matter. Yeah, I feel like I should still be able to do that as long as y'all don't go to blows, even if y'all don't get along necessarily. Well, the thing about what you said, as far as like women, women, it's mostly women that say I don't want that chick around my baby. Or I, I would even say it's mostly women because I definitely heard dudes be like, "Yo, you better not have that." You, you, you know what I'm saying, around my kid or whatever. Yeah, I heard but that where I'm just going with that, that wasn't the point. The point was, um, a lot of times they say that it's not necessarily because of that person. Mm-hmm. It's because they probably still have feelings for that person, their their baby mother or baby father, and they, they're they holding on. They're not, they don't want to let it go. They don't want to see them with another person. So they use that, oh, I don't want, don't want that person around my baby because it's like they see them as, oh, this person's now moving on with somebody else. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I'm jealous of it. So I'm going to try to find a way to keep you away from her mm-hmm. and or keep you away from him. And that's the way of doing it is by putting the child in the middle of that. That's yeah. usually what that means. Yeah. So 
that I don't it, it's some half the most of the time when that happens it's not because of the other person. It's such an ugly game though. It really, it, it's such an ugly game because like I didn't see any cases where chicks be like, if that chick around you can't see your kid, and then boom, you got now you now you got a legal fight. Now you fighting for the you know see it's your kid you know, like like bro. I don't know how dudes do it. That's why I'm big on like marry before you carry get yeah. you know marry like don't run the worst that thing. But I'm big on that because I, I don't care. Like, when it comes to my kids, like, I'm, I'm going to get crazy. Like, don't hit me with I can't see my kid, you know, play games. I'm busting windows out. Yeah, I don't care. I'm slashing tight. I don't it care. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, like you said, things happen. Divorce happen. Relationships, relationships fail. Some people are just not meant to be together. Mm -hmm. But don't put that child in the middle of that because at the end of the day, that child did not ask to be here. That child was born into this. So don't make it hard on the child. Don't send me to jail. Because <laughs> You talking about that's you to jail. Don't send me to jail. <laughs> you if you keep me away from my my child, you sending me to jail. Uh -oh. I'm busting windows. I'm climbing through the, the window like bro, man. I ain't climbing through nobody window. Shut up. I ain't trying. <laughs> <laughs> but no, because at the end of the day, it's the, it's the child that is the one that gets hurt the most because. Yeah. They see their parents fighting. They have to decide who they want to be with. They might not want to be with their parent, and um. It it just it gets ugly. Mm, okay, okay, all right. So I, I don't want to hop on that too long. We 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 gonna have to uh, transition. These transitions gonna get a little better when we uh the the chemistry builds up. All right, because <laughs> I'm just straight raw transition. There's no jokes, no punchlines yeah. to transition. We, all right, so that, have you seen what Black China was in the news for recently? Yes, I have. All right, so it's been all over Twitter and Facebook. You think and... she deserved child support? Heck no. All right, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I got I to gotta, I gotta clarify. I got to clarify this up. So a lot of people probably don't care because if we weren't doing content, I wouldn't give a damn about the Black China either. But uh, so pretty much, if you don't know, <laughs> Black China was pretty much on Twitter talking about how uh, <laughs> Black China was talking about how she uh, needed some child. Like, not saying she needed child support, but she like pretty much she went on you. I just sound like bugs. I don't care. But she, you know how chicks be online. Like they be like, yo, I uh I'm a strong black woman. I'm a I'm a strong single black woman. You know, I do this and blah blah. So she was on her single strong black woman tip, which is fine. If you're a single strong black woman, you know more power to you. But she was pretending, you know what I'm saying? She was faking it fraud, like what's that what's shorty name? That was uh the head of the NAACP and they found out she was Caucasian. I don't know her name, but I know you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She was faking and frauding on her single black mother. Like if you a single black woman, I'm gonna need you to get her out of here. Like she was a uh, part of that <laughs> because she was frauding so hard. So look, she went on Twitter and pretty much said that she's doing it all on her own, getting out the mud with no support. That's what she yeah. said. She, and then she wanted sympathy by saying she had to sell. I think she said three of her cars. Yeah, because she was being like responsible. That. It was something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. She was selling her cars like that. She was being responsible because that's what you do as a parent or something like that. She tried to slide that in. And then Tiger had comments. It was like, bro, I have my child six days out of the week. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And then Rob Kardashian. I forgot she had a baby by dude. I forgot dude was even a person. By Rob Kardashian? I forgot he existed. How? How did I forget he existed? How did you forget she had a child back home? I forgot he existed. But I mean, I mean, yeah, that too. But how? I mean, that was like big news when they broke up. I didn't even know they broke up. <laughs> oh, no, no. I remember him crying on Instagram. I do remember crying on Instagram. I think he wanted a back. And I think she was like, you too fat. And then he lost weight. And then she still didn't want him back or something like that. I don't know the whole full story. I could have just made that up the whole time. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I, really I probably just like, made that, that up. Sounds I remember what you would do. I, I, I remember them being spiteful for a penny uh, <laughs> online. So that's all I remember. But pretty much, Rob came out too and was like, yo, I have my kid for five days a week or something like that. Yeah. You know, okay, it was messed up. This is this what called me. Hold on, hold on, y'all. This is what called me. One of the kids was with her. No, one of the kids was with their father from like Tuesday to Sunday. Well, Tuesday to Saturday. Tuesday to Saturday, I think. I think that was Rob Kardashian. One of them, Tuesday, Tuesday to Saturday. Saturday. One of the kids got two days with the mom and the other one got one. Or like some, yeah. like, bro, yeah. why, why are you seeing one of the kids less than the other? Like, do you not love these kids equally? Do you, do you, think, it's, do, do you think parents, like, because we only have one kid, right? We only have yeah, one child, have all right? Child. Do you, do you, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. We'll get back to the topic. Do you think parents usually have a favorite kid? <laughs> yes. Do you think you can have a favorite kid? I think yes. I do think parents can have a favorite child. Yes. 
You answer the question. Do you think you're going to have a favorite kid? Or do, I, do I think I'm going to have yeah, a favorite kid? Yeah, you going to have a favorite kid? No, I don't think I will, no. So that's the thing. I might not have a favorite kid, mm-hmm. but I low-key might have them competing a little bit. <laughs> I can believe that. Like, yo, yo. I can believe that. You know, what it would be nice if you made this for your daddy. If you let your daddy, one of y'all would get up and do this for me. So, and so this is in my personal family, because you know, with me, with my mom, there's three of us. Yeah. I have two older brothers. Yeah. And so in our situation, it's, it's kind of hard for my mom to choose a favorite because my oldest brother is the most successful one. So he spoils her rotten. Mm-hmm. Like he literally gives my mom almost everything that she wants. He does. But I'm the youngest and I'm the only girl. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm kinda like wiggling in there a little bit with the No, it don't matter. What you mean it don't matter? It don't matter. <laughs> it, it, it Being the only matter. girl don't matter. It I does promise matter. it don't I'm, I'm the only girl and I'm the baby. Yeah, that's probably but it's probably different, right? Your mom probably definitely has a fi- favorite. And if I had to if I had to guess, right, no offense, I think your brother is the favorite the child. Oldest one? The oldest one. I do think he's the favorite child. But I think I think you just get that love. Like I think it's oh, this is my baby, this is my youngest child. <laughs> but I'm not the But you have my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my baby, I love you. But you're not my favorite. <laughs> if you say so. You gotta buy a couple more Gucci bags <laughs> and some more yeah, playing chips for for you to be your yeah, favorite. Not happen. But yeah, yeah, I think I think <laughs> but, but, but back on topic, I, I got super sidetracked. Um how, how do you feel when you saw this? How, how did you feel about Black China? So the China first War? thought that came to me is this is hilarious. I started dying laughing because I'm like, you know what? She got exactly what she deserved. Yeah, because that's crazy. You cannot go on social media and talk about how, oh, I'm doing this all by myself. I'm struggling because I'm raising my kids. And yet the other one, you know for a fact that you are not the primary you can. Caregiver. You can, though. No, you can't. You can. You, you can, but she it, did it. it won't make sense. And you're, you're basically <laughs> lying. You're not the primary caregiver for your kids. How much? They are with their dads 90, I'll say 95% of the time, and they're providing everything for them financially. What are you doing? My question is, how much, do you, how much stuff do you see on social media that you think is real? <laughs> Barely any of it. Okay, I was going to say, I guarantee you out of everything that you watch, I feel like 99.9% of it is fake. It probably is. Like, there, I is, believe I have there is nothing that I see on the internet that I believe in. Like, it could be some legitimate stuff that look real and I still don't believe. I question everything that I see. Like, like anything, you see, anything I see on social media that even looks like it can be questionable, I have to do my own research on it because you just never know with some of this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, um, like even with the Chris Rock thing. Oh, that was a nasty transition. That's actually on my topic. <laughs> even with the Chris Rock thing. I did a video on it. Mm-hmm. And obviously some people's worked up. Some people wasn't. Um, you know, depending on whatever platform you saw it on, and it, obviously it got it got people divided. But personally, I feel like there's a possibility that that's fake. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying it is fake, but we live in such a clout chasing era mm-hmm. where you just you at the point where you can't believe anything that you see. Yeah, and I don't know how, how do you okay. Well, how what's, I, I do want to talk to you about this, right? This, right. this is an amazing transition. Okay. I got two questions for you. I'm, I'm gonna ask you the first question that you answered. Then I'm gonna ask you the second question. All right. Okay. How do you feel about Chris Rock calling Jada Pinkett bald head? Essentially, he didn't say you bald head, but he called her bald head, and she does have alopecia. So I have two things to say about that. All right. The first thing I'm going to say is, I don't think Chris Rock knew. Okay. That oh, okay. Jada was suffering from alopecia. You're the first one I've ever heard. I've heard say that thus far. But okay, go I ahead. I don't think he knew mm-hmm. because her, I mean, a lot of people that's talking about it on Facebook that's worked up about it. Oh, she has alopecia. She has alopecia. But how many people actually knew that? I for one did not know that. Bro, you I heard. Have admitted that I heard. heard that. I was gonna say I heard. Okay, so I heard that she talked about it in in hindsight, right after it happened. Somebody had brought to my attention and she talked about it on the red, on the red table, the whatever red talk. We don't watch that show. Okay. I have never seen a full episode of that. One of my guys, Joe, I was messaging, you know Joe. Oh, yeah. yeah well, Joe was messaging me and Joe was sending me clips. We, okay, we was talking crazy. Then. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah, the yeah. DMs, all right, we can't <laughs> never do that. Okay, y'all talk. We, we canceled. <laughs> but we was in the DMs talking and he sent me the, the, the August clip. Mm-hmm. He sent me the August clip. 
He sent me like three, three, three episodes. Actually, he sent me the full episodes. Because first thing I did, I tried to go to YouTube and watch it. Right. And I, I, that's when I realized that it was a Facebook exclusive. I don't think people who watch her show realize that everybody don't watch her show. Right. Like I asked somebody, like, okay, I just find the topics of Jada Pinkett to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I'm not really that invested. I don't care enough where I'm truly invested. Right. I've seen the, the stuff with August. I've seen what came out of that. I've seen, like, you know, all the nut stuff that's come from her. Mm -hmm. So that's what sort of forms my... I don't watch the Red Table. I and, I, I, and to your point, I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I'll ask the whole to get into, too. But I agree with you that there's the possibility. I'm not going to say Chris Rock didn't know, but I agree with you that it's the possibility, you know? It's a, it's a possibility. Like, I mean, I understand that people are saying, like, well, Will and, and Chris are friends, so he should have known. But it's like, that's not necessarily true because... How often do you tell your friends about your significant other's health issues? Mm -hmm. Like, th th unless there's something super major, a lot of times your friends don't know about your significant other's health issues. And something like alopecia, that's not something that you're going to... I don't even think, really I don't even think Chris and Will are real friends. I don't I'm, think... I'm just saying, if, even if they were. Wow. But I, to go back to, to my, what I was going to say is, I don't think that Chris Rock knew. And I would hope that if he did know... He would not have made that joke because he knew that if if he if he knew that she had it, obviously he would know it's a sensitive topic for her. So he I don't think he would make that joke. Also, and I don't know how true this is or not, but a lot of people were saying that the joke has a deeper meaning to it because of the story behind G.I. Jane. So I don't know if that's true about it, about her messing with a younger man and all of that stuff, and they were saying it has a deeper meaning to it. I don't know if that's what he intended by it. She's going to look like Tupac, bro. But, huh? She just won't like Tupac. Shut up. Uh, she just won't look like Tupac. <laughs> I'm going to give it a buck with you. I ain't buying none of this. You know, you know what's crazy? This, this is the thing. Let's say if all this is real, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say Chris Rock knew that she had alopecia. Mm -hmm. Let's say that Will told him, bro, my, my wife got alopecia, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sympathetic. Now, let's say, let, now, let's say if, if Chris Rock knew that she had alopecia mm -hmm. and Will warned him to leave my wife alone mm -hmm. and Will stuck him after that. Now, I don't think he should have did it at the Grammys. No. But. That was inappropriate. Now, now I don't think he should have did it at the Grammys, but let's say if Will stuck him because Will said, I warned you. You know what I'm saying? As a man, I think that you should have to live with your words before you get physical. So let's say if Will warned him and told him to leave her alone and Chris Rock went there again, mm -hmm. all right? I'm going to chill a little bit on, on Will Smith still on him. I'm, I'm against Will still alone on him, but I can understand it if there was a warning okay. issue because first. Because there was already a discussion I had and you didn't listen, so now I have to take it further. But! But. But. But what? Let's keep it a buck, bro. Can we stop pretending alopecia is cancer? <laughs> Can we stop pretending that she she got what's the other one? Le is it leukemia? That takes her is it leukemia? Yes. I, I, okay, leukemia. Can we leukemia. stop pretending? Okay, this is the thing, bro. Dudes go bald every day, B. Every day. Mm -hmm. Dudes lose their hair. Bro, I cannot type LeBron James name in on Twitter without seeing the hairline joke. Mm -hmm. Dudes lose their stuff. Chicks be like, let it go. Let it go. You see dudes with the whole, the, the fake dreads and the waves that they do in that, right? You see a barber put the, the lines on their head and start shaping up and cutting it and gluing it in, right? Yeah. What you see on the comments? You see females in the comments talking about, eh, let it go. Y'all dudes <laughs> got lace for us too. Y'all want to be bad chicks so bad, blah, blah, blah. No sympathy. No sympathy whatsoever. So let's keep it a book. Keep it a book. Chicks have no sympathy or no remorse for dudes going bald. That's all jokes aside. Can, can you agree to that? that? Women on average do not have sympathy for men going bald. I can agree with that. But as someone who has suffered from alopecia. You? Because, yes. Remember after we had like, we had the baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suffered from. I didn't from, know the alopecia. Yes. It's called. Um, I forgot what it's called. But yeah, it's it's pretty much as it's, it's common. But after you have a child, mm -hmm. you suffer from alopecia, you start going bald around the edges. Mm -hmm. So someone that who suffered from that, 
I can say that I can understand it being a sensitive topic because I think if someone made a joke about that at me, you saw how I was when when my hair was falling out, like how distraught I was. I was crying. You was like, it's okay, it's gonna grow back. Yeah. And all that stuff. So I can understand. Can you know, wait, 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 no, no, let me No, 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 let me say something quick. <laughs> I knew that you that was a sensitive topic for you. Because I know since we've been together, since when you were natural, your hair's been growing. Mm-hmm. So like, as your hair gets longer, I got so used to calling you bald headed. <laughs> Yeah, when your hair started thinning, and I, I accidentally, I always told you, it was like one day I said something. And I was like, you still blew up. And I, you stopped just that, right? Yeah, I stopped myself. Because I see the look on your face. I said, damn, I can't even crack this joke, though. Exactly. So as someone who has suffered from I can understand the sensitiveness behind it. Yes. But at the same time, you know that at the Oscars, people crack jokes. You know yes. that he's a comedian. You know that he's a comedian. These are that, yeah, these are things that you might not like it, and it, it might hurt your feelings a little bit. But you cannot take comedians seriously. Come on, everybody knows that. Come on, you cannot take them seriously. Come on, and it's, and it's, this, a joke is not necessarily personal unless they say something really, is, really personal. This is what kills me the most about it, though, right? People keep using excuse like when people crack jokes about her smash August Alcina. Mm-hmm. When people crack jokes about her. Her having an open marriage or whatever. Yep. From my understanding, that was during a breakup. It wasn't an open marriage. It was a breakup. They they broke up with each other. They wasn't feeling each other. These are some Will Smith words, not mine. Yeah. It wasn't. They, said it on the they did not say, in that clip that I saw, they did not say we have an open marriage. They no. said we were broken up. Will Smith said I was done with you. And then she said that's when she had her entanglement, right? He, said, he, he admitted himself that they was doing their own thing. Exactly, right? Yes. But he didn't say open marriage. He said we were broken up. Yeah. So if during a breakup, all right, you're 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 fine with her doing her thing and stuff like that, mm-hmm. right? And people say, hey, Jada smashing other people, blah, blah, blah. And you don't care because y'all doing y'all thing, y'all separate. What I don't understand is how is it still okay and not disrespectful for people to still joke about their, their relationship being open? Because what blew me up most about the Chris Rock situation, right? is they were trying to say, like, uh, um, they had an open situation back then, so it shouldn't even matter, blah, blah. That's when it was open. Right now, they're together, right? right? They're, even if it is open relationship, right now, they're projecting to the world that they are together and in a relationship right. and that they're good to go. Right. So how is it okay in the same night before in a solid relationship, y'all are together now, for people to joke about your your open relationship. Because when people joke about their open relationship, they're not just joking that, hey, you know, we, we gonna smash. They're hinting at the situation, specifically her smashing August Alcina. Mm-hmm. That's what all these jokes uh, derive from. Yeah. So when you sit here and you allow people to come on stage and say, you know, Will, I want to smash you. I forgot, I was like, Regina, uh, uh, what's her last name? Regina Hall. Hall, maybe. I don't know. I'd be mixing the Hall and King. Yeah, it's like Hall and King. I'd be yeah, up. I was mixing up. I'm pretty sure it's Regina Hall. But they, they was joking about them having an open relationship, talking about she can, she, she the quote said she's going to take him in the back and blah, blah, do something to him. Mm-hmm. And she joked about it. Now, I'm not saying Will Smith should have jumped on stage and stuck her for the be equal mm-hmm. energy. But what I'm saying is they laughed and joked and giggled and ha ha, right? Yeah. So if I'm Chris Rock and I'm in the back, and I see you get that open marriage joke off. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming to light it up too. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Their relationship, their relationship ain't the same as her being bald headed. Yeah, I'm about to say it's. It, it's not it's the same. Joke, yeah. It's a different type of joke. But disrespect is disrespect. Yeah. If me and you was broken up and now we back together, I don't want to hear people joking about you having sex with another man. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be hear people cracking jokes about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's an open relationship, blah, blah, blah. You're free to do what you want. I, I don't want to hear that because I know where that joke to, that comes from. It comes from our child's friends gutting you out when I was gone. Yeah. So I ain't with it. So I don't understand how that joke is okay, but the other one isn't. And and, and, and again, she has the right to be offended. Mm-hmm. But Will, dog, you stuck up. You stuck a grown man over a ball head joke. Yeah. Like, that's what it all boils down to. Yeah. You stuck a man over a bald head joke. And I know people try to pull the whole black women and y'all don't understand we go with our hair and blah, 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 blah. blah. And it's like, bro, why? Why do, we, why do we try to limit that to black women as if that's just not a black problem in general? Right. It's not like 
black women can't wear dreads in the workplace, but it's professional for black men to wear dreads in the workplace. Right. It's the same stuff for men and women. It's right. not exclusively a black woman thing. Right. And my thing is like, and I think the reason why they try to frame it to be a black woman thing is because it it, it, it cushions the blow of them not taking our play serious as men. Yeah. And I ain't trying to get on a soapbox, but it cushions the blow. If black women create the narrative that their hair is so precious and that they're discriminated if they, uh, because of their hair and they're denied these opportunities because of their hair, then, then it, it, it doesn't hurt when, when they laugh at a black man for losing his hair and going bald. Mm-hmm. It don't hurt when they laugh at a man's hair laugh for being back, uh, going back. You don't think the men that, that, are, that are installing wigs on top of their hair, you don't think they're insecure? Of you, course they are. You, you, you don't think it takes a certain level of insecurity for you to pay all that extra money for somebody to glue somebody else's hair on the top of your damn head as a man? I mean, of course, yeah, of course. Of course they're going to feel some type of way. It's a sensitive subject for anybody who's bald and if, the, if it's not... Um, if it's not a, a choice, um, it's a sense of topic. Like I said, I I went through it too, and if anybody had made those type of jokes about me, I would have been offended too. So I, yeah, it's not a, it's not just women. Anybody that has that those type of situations is sensitive about it, and yeah. they don't like those type of jokes being played about them. But like this, like I said. As a comedian, especially with Will, because I don't know if we consider Will a comedian or not. I consider but, him a comedian. But it's like either he's a someone, comedian or a clown. One or two, he's doing <laughs> funny stuff most of the time. Yeah, as, as someone who has been in that type of field, you should know how these things go. Like you should know that uh, to a comedian, there are no boundaries. That like comedians make jokes and, about. And this is the thing. Everybody. This is the thing. But uh, I, I hear you about the comedian. There's no boundaries. I get that we live in a time that some of the stuff. That can't slot. Like, Eddie Murphy's raw and uncut and him using, you know, the F-bomb that mm-hmm. sounds like maggot. Mm-hmm. Him him saying, like, crazy stuff about homosexual people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I get that can't, that can't slot in, in this, this era. Somebody being literally handicapped, like, they limbs don't work to say, you know, c- cerebral palsy and stuff like that. People with cerebral palsy, people crack jokes, put their arms up and stuff like that all the time back in the day. Yeah. And people thought that was okay. I get stuff like that not 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 working. Yeah, right? I, I get I get that too. But what Will and and his supporters and Jen's supporters don't understand is they've even less a lot of people have, have hypothesized right that mm-hmm. they think that this is Will getting to his breaking point. Mm-hmm. They think that this is breaking point. Yeah, bro. The thing about this is your wife has done this. Yeah. People ain't hopping over your gate. It ain't like her and August and Alcina was in the crib smashing. Some paparazzi hopped over the gate, went up to the glass of the camera and caught them having sex. They publicized that, right? Yeah, yeah. When, when Willow wrote that damn letter for Tupac talking about uh, uh, my mommy misses you, I think that you're alive. Can you please come back so my mama, mommy can be happy? We didn't know about that until they publicized that, right? Right. So, yo, it, it, it's like if you don't realize all the crazy stuff that has been published by that family, you've given the public ammunition to crush you with. You've given them ammunition for them to crack them jokes. Because you know people can't take them serious. Well, so so what I the one thing I never understood was with the August I've seen a thing, did they publicize that or did he publicize that when he made that song? So the thing about that was he publicized it. Okay. But this but this is my issue about it. This is why I don't feel bad for her. She August Alcina came to that family with a drug addiction. Mm-hmm. He was dying. Organs was messing up. His or he was in the hospital. His organs had shut down. The duo has publicly spoken about the fact that he was going blind. There was something wrong. They didn't even know why he was going blind. His eyes. He was losing his vision. Everything. Going through the worst part of his life. He was her kid's friend. Right. I know that part. And she swooped in and took advantage of that. And people may say that's a grown man. That's not predatory. That's predatory. Yeah. Because if we switched it, was, it around, it was, and it, was, it was a young lady who was in those exact situations, they would be calling me R. Kelly Harvey Weinstein regardless, <laughs> and she's a grown woman. Yeah. But they would put me in the same boat as R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how the media handled it, right? So when, when he was hurt and he came out and publicized it, and you see all the manipulation, yes, August Alcina publicized it, but she put herself in that position. Because if you having a friends with benefits, you don't move how she was moving. I don't know if you ever seen the August Alcina Nunya remix. I don't know if you heard Kalani got a song called Nunya. No. August Alcina remixed it. And then he put text messages in it that weren't the actual text messages, but he was given a general sense of what Jada had been saying to him. And she was treating him like it was a relationship. Okay. You can't you can't have a side piece and say, yo, we got an open relationship. I'm just having sex with you. 
But then when I find out you're messing with other people, I'm messaging you, asking you, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you with somebody? Why are you doing this? Don't Please don't do this. Don't mess this up what we got. And he like, no, I want a serious relationship. And she's like, give me time. Give me time. She put herself in that position. Because if, if she would have never lied to August, then we wouldn't even be in a position where August over there singing entanglements. When she, and then think about this will make it worse. You go, you go, you do your little red table talk to address it, right? Mm -hmm. Your man, your husband is sitting there holding your hand while you explain why how you had sex with a, 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 another man. Why you're married? Yeah, y'all broken up, whatever. Fine, right? I'm not judging that. If that's that's that was the agreement, I don't care about that. But your your husband has to sit here in embarrassment and hold your hand while you do that. Mm -hmm. And and and. and well, about that. Your husband has to sit there and hold your hand about that. And you don't even want to be honest about what it was. She don't want to say, hey, I had an inappropriate relationship with that young man. She still refused to take any accountability. And I think that's why the internet jumped on her case because morally, right? You, you can say, hey, that's their business. That's true. Right. But we all have our own moral co compass. And according to mine and a lot of other people's, morally what she did was wrong. Mm -hmm. So you're going to open yourself up to them jokes. You did that. And, and I want to add this about the Tupac thing when I said that they give people ammunition. Willow, like, what, 18 right now? 20 right now? no idea. Yo, Pac, Pac died in the 90s. How the hell is your daughter talking about please come back so my mommy can be happy? <laughs> she ain't never even, This man was dead before she was born. Yeah. I don't, how the hell is she... Long gone, way before she bro, was born. Bro, imagine how... Okay. Cause how, like me and much, you were little when we was little when Pac. How was. much do you think she talked about Pac for her kids to do that? How much do you got to tell your kids that you love Tupac for for your kid to write a letter saying come back and make mama? Bro, your daddy is in the other room. What do you mean <laughs> Tupac come I, back? That is why. I'm yo, yo, I don't want to hear. This is why I don't feel for Jada, right? Yeah. I, I feel like it's always framed to make her the victim in all of this. Well, Jada's not a victim, bro. Like, I don't see any way that she comes out as the victim. And people say, oh, she got alopecia. It was so mean to talk about her hair. Bro, it's not cancer. It's not I cancer. Mean, it, like I said, I can't understand it being a sensitive topic. But at the same time, I don't think it was that serious. It was, to me, it was, it was a bad joke. But it wasn't a joke that should have resulted into violence. Yo, that joke wasn't that good, though. It, it was a bad joke. Hang on, hold on. That, that low-key was a trash joke. Like, <laughs> like, a, like, bro, just seeing somebody be like, I want to see you part two. Like, G.I. Jane, that movie from the 90s, like, that's an old-ass yeah, movie. Old it, it might be from the 90s or the early 2000s, but that, 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 that joke was trash. It was, it was, it was a bad joke. It a bad Maybe joke. we'll smack him because the joke wasn't funny. <laughs> He probably didn't even care about uh, Jada. He, because he laughed at first, and it probably, he probably realized in his head, like, "Yo, that shit was trash. Like, why I laugh at that?" <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. smack you because that was that bad. Yeah, like, it was a bad joke, but I mean, it. All in all, I do not, I do not agree with Will getting on stage and turning this violence. I do not yeah, agree with that. Yeah, yeah, the whole scenario about protect our black women and whatever. I don't want to hear all of that crap because at the end of the day. It should have never resulted to that. It should have went that far. It should have went that far. All he had to do was pull him aside and say, hey, that was an inappropriate joke. I do not like what you said. Um, I would prefer for you to get back on stage and apologize because yeah. of this. Because apologize to my white public. Even if you ain't got to get back on stage, apologize to my white public. Apologize like you publicly. Publicly. Exactly. And be tell him, like, this is what's going on. You know, she has a health condition. She's embarrassed by this. This is a sensitive topic, and I think you should apologize to her in public because you're embarrassed to her in public. Yeah. And all in all, everything would have been done. It would have been solved. Yeah. She would have gotten an apology, would have made her feel better. We would have dressed him as a man, and Chris Rock would have got slapped. Yeah, that, that's so whack to me because I think it's, if it was somebody big on stage, she would have did that. It's, Bro, it, yeah. if the Rock was up there cracking ball head jokes, he would have sat there laughing. <laughs> yeah. He would have he laughed like, his yeah, butt off. It, it was a. I don't want to say, I don't want to curse, but it, but it was, a, it was a bitch move. You know what's it crazy? What, what, Chris Rock should have got a good joke off. If he got a good one off, it would have stuck on him too. Because he should have looked at Jay and said, damn, you should have like Tupac, ain't you? That's what he should have said. He should have said, you should have like Pop. He's like, damn, you really don't love your husband. You've been trying to, you've been so in love with Tupac since he's been gone. That's your true first love. You should have like him, ain't you? I would have asked and straight up like that. And then if we would have stuck no, that's you, disrespectful. If we would have stuck me, then I'd be like, all right. Yeah, that's a that's You a, got it. You that's got a it. Disrespect. Uh, yeah. But that's a bar, though. But that's, that's a bar, disrespectful. though. Disrespectful. And if he would have said that, I would have smacked him. <laughs> <laughs>
Because that is super <laughs> hey, You know, it is what it is. <laughs> People are so mad about it. And this is the thing. I want to say this too before y'all talk because I don't want to harp on this too long. Yeah. This is the thing. How you feel about ladies saying that they men better keep this energy out in the street? How, how you feel about ladies saying that? It's stupid. Why? Me, and this is just me. I, I guess I was raised differently. I don't know. But like I said, things like that should never result to violence if it can be handled with words. If, like you said, if he had went to him and said, hey, don't talk about my wife. Don't say something about my wife because of this and that. And then he still did it. Then by all means. Mm -hmm. But at, at the end of the day, like we had the discussion before and we were mm -hmm. saying like, in today's age, people don't fight anymore. Mm -hmm. You never know. And even if that person don't do something, they might have somebody else that might run up on you and do something. They might turn you into a pack. They might turn you into a pack. And that's the stuff like that happens. You might not be the aggressive, but you never know somebody who 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 their family is. You might not know who they got sitting in the audience. You yep. might not know who they got sitting behind stage. And so, so what if somebody ran out of pop wheel just right, right there? And yeah. now he's gone. All yeah. because of what? The results may vary. That's what I'm telling people. Like, yo, ladies, y'all can't keep telling y'all men, our men better keep that keep that energy. If you weak, just say, yo, yo, how, yo, dudes, will, you not gonna smack a dude and walk away. No. I have seen dudes get shot for less. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You not gonna smack a dude and just walk away. Results will vary, chief. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm like saying? Me, me personally, like, let's say if me and you was in that type of situation, would I have wanted you to stand up for me? Yes, 100%. But do I want you to get on a stage on a national television and smack another man because of a bad joke? You know, I, I think it's, people it's, fundamentally no. don't understand what defend means. Like, if somebody is saying something to you disrespectful, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to check, buddy. I'm going to check him. And if we have a verbal altercation, we have a verbal altercation, mm -hmm. right? If some dude, you know, grab, grab your butt or whatever or, did, or touched you, right? Mm -hmm. Physical. Now I have to protect you as your, your husband physically. Right. I, I meet you where you meet me at. If it's words, we can talk about it. If you physically touch somebody or you threaten somebody, right? Mm -hmm. If Chris Rock would have threatened Jada over the stuff that she's done over the last year, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. That's a threat. Right. I think that's equal to violence. Yeah. If you if you threaten somebody. 100%, yeah. But I'm not going to meet words with a fist if the words aren't violent. It's right. a bald head joke, bro. And you may think that hey is wrong. All I ask is this. And we can get off of this. All I ask is this. If you are passionate about hair mm -hmm. and you feel like what Chris Rock did was wrong and talking about Jada's situation, all I ask of black women is to keep that same energy. That's it. All I ask of black women to keep that same energy when it comes to men. So I don't want to see black women who sit here talking about alopecia and stuff like that with Jada. I don't want to see those same black women talking crazy about black men when they lose their hairline, when their hair is uh, uh, going back and stuff like that and they don't want to let it go or they're getting you know, lace fronts and stuff yeah. like that. I don't want to see black women doing that. Be fair. If you, if you, want, if you want love... Give me the same thing. Just like people say, Will needs to protect his wife. His wife should have protected him. Yeah. Because back in the day, she should have never you, let him get on you, you, Back in the day, you used to see a dude about to wild out or lose it. And what does Queen do? His Queen keep him in check. Mm -hmm. His Queen keep him in check. Because if you look at the chessboard, that's how it works. The Queen is the most dangerous piece on the board. The, you need to take the King out to win, but the Queen is the most dangerous. The most dangerous piece on the board. Yeah. The queen can queen go from can right here and get gone. The queen can go all the way to the other side of the board. The king can only move, move one one direction each turn. Yep. But the queen, the queen is the most dangerous piece. The queen is supposed to have her head on. The queen is the the piece. She she's the most important piece on the board. Yeah. So when when Will tried to get up and put his hands on Chris, you know, as as her, as her his wife, she just said she should have been like, I love you. I appreciate you about to put hands on this fool for me. That's good it. for me. But don't do it. Don't Stay do it. back. Yeah. Girls used to be in front of their men talking about, stop it, don't do it. Right. She she let him go on stage, do it, and then when he came back, she put her forehead against his forehead and then kissed him or whatever. That was the most public display of affection we've seen from her. I don't never see them caked up outside of him explaining why she was having sex with August and he was holding hands. I don't see them caked up like that, but they would show all the love of their war shot after that. She get off on that stuff. I think she truly enjoys it. I think that she's she's an agent of chaos. I think that's truly what she is. I think she loves the chaos. That's why she leaves him out to dry and get all those jokes and, and spread all of that stupid stuff. One thing I do want to say, because you, you mentioned um, men with hair pieces and things like that. One thing that I have not seen anyone ask yet is, 
If Jade is so embarrassed about her hair and her alopecia, why don't she wear wigs? That's the thing, though. That's the thing. I, I agree with you that that's an option. I don't think that she should have to. I mean, no, she shouldn't have she, to. I don't think that she should have to. But she, she was on record saying a few days before that mm-hmm. that she don't give a damn. She loves her head. Right. And no matter what people say, she's just going to laugh it off because she she's cool and comfortable in her skin. And then a few days later, her husband walking on stage to punch somebody in the face over, over the hair thing. If you are that self-conscious, right, about it, then you could wear a wig. That is an option. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to use that as a justification as a, if you don't want people to crack jokes when you wear a wig, right? That's Yeah, I'm, that, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, I'm, 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 not, I'm not even talking about the joke. I'm saying for her own personal um, reasons, if she's so embarrassed about it and she's so self-conscious about it, that's usually what most people do. That yeah, you wear know, wig they something. wear wigs. Yeah. So uh, that's why I was, I was curious about that. But I mean, if she's saying that she's comfortable with it, and she don't care what anybody say. Then that joke that Chris Rock made was nothing. Have, it was white. The joke wasn't even good. Yeah, it shouldn't have faded. Her. She should have booed him. Yeah. Like she should have booed the joke because the joke was a bad joke. I mean, and I, they should have booed him. They, I think some people in the audience did boo him because he did like this, and he was like, "What? It was a good joke." There were some people that was, I think, like either they booed him or they. Or they were like, "Oh." Like, yeah, like, 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 I'm going to get fired. You know, if you going to write me up, I'm going to do something to get rolled up. You're not going to write me up, just do it. I'm going to earn anything you bring my way. That's how I feel about it. But, all right, next topic. I'm tired of talking about that. I, I think that's enough. I hope, I hope they don't go viral for nothing else for the rest of year. For the rest of their lives. I don't. I, I could live with not talking about Jada and Will ever well, This is probably going to last for a while. So I, I hope that it, I hope that <laughs> nothing major happens. Because I've seen Chris Rock brothers talking about uh, beating Will up and stuff like that. Yeah, I heard he made some jokes too. Yeah, I, I hope not. I'm over them. I'm not even gonna lie. We talked about that for a long time. I kind of want to get it out, get your opinion on it too. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> people was fighting about it, and I was kind of like going back and forth with people. But people was dead serious to getting angry about it. I was just like, bro, it's yeah, not it's that not serious. That serious. It, it might not even be real. Yeah. So what do we do? And then it's like, why? Why do? Why are y'all getting so angry? It has nothing to do with y'all. This does not affect y'all. Why are y'all being so angry? People can't reasonably disagree. Like. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into it, but I had some conversation on Facebook. Yeah. But all right, let's talk about. Um, <laughs> let's go to the next topic. <laughs> um, we we gonna get into the dating. Let's get let's get into the dating stuff. Right. Dating we talk. Stuff. Okay. All right. We let's talk about this. So, I see dating gurus on social media all the time. Uh, yes. And gurus. Uh, yeah, guru dating gurus. That's what I like to call them. Um. How do you feel about dating girls? Like, what is your opinion on the idea of dating girls? <sighs> dating girls, to me, I feel like a bunch of them are frauds. Mm-hmm. First of all, not every relationship, relationships in general are not a one size fit all. Mm-hmm. Not everybody have the same passions, the same mentalities, the same, like nothing, nothing is the same about relationships. Mm-hmm. Nobody's in the same situations. Nobody goes through the same experiences. Nobody goes through, um, you know, the same obstacles in their relationships. So it's not one size fit all. So these guys that be telling you, oh, or these women that be telling you, don't date this person or don't date that person. It's like, who do you, who are you to tell me who I should and shouldn't date? Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with you. Like, you're not in my relationship. Yep. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what this person has been through. And I don't know. They just, I don't. I see these dating gurus, they call themselves, and I just, their advice goes in one ear and out the other. Mm-hmm. Because half of the stuff that they're saying, I'm like, one, you're not even, either you don't make sense, half of them are hypocrites, mm-hmm. half of them can't even keep a relationship themselves. Mm-hmm. So how can you be a guru on something where you can't even keep your own relationship in check? Yeah, that's that's my thing. Like, if you're not in a relationship, I kind of definitely don't want to hear. Yeah, um, like, come on. But my, my biggest thing is, I feel like, like you said, one size doesn't fit all, right? Mm-hmm. And when people say, I seen a post today that it, it straight up annoyed me because the, the <laughs> lady was telling me, it, it's pretty much like, I, I don't want to sound like I'm harping too hard on women, right? But I, I got to keep it a buck because from my perspective as a man, 
But I see the Kevin Samuels in our space. Yeah. But I think yeah. our I think the men leading the men in the wrong way. I don't think it's as many men being led in the wrong way as there are women. Mm-hmm. I, I think that for years women have been getting bad advice from their grandmothers, their mothers, from talk shows. Uh, uh, men and women, right? You got dudes like Steve Harvey that's telling you to lock the boxes out for ninety days, as if that changes anything. Right. If if I if I want to hit that bad enough, I'll wait ninety days, and that won't make me not dog you out afterwards. Yeah, that don't really prove anything. They gonna make, yeah. <clears throat> but you got dudes like Steve Harvey, the Derek Jackson. You got dudes that'll tell you bad stuff, and you also got women feeding you you guys bad stuff and terrible dating advice, mm-hmm. and. I don't like dating gurus as a whole, right? right. That's that's without specifying male or female. I don't like dating gurus as a whole. I don't either. I'm not a fan of them. No. I think a lot of them are terrible. I've done videos on people like Fresh and Fit, right? Mm-hmm. Where occasionally they will have a point that I say, okay, I kind of agree with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the points I've seen them make before is uh, uh, you can't be a, a, a new school woman asking for a traditional man and vi- you know, vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like You can't say, hey, I want a man that's going to pay all the bills He's going to do all this stuff for me and provide. And I don't cook. I don't clean. I'm just going to stay at home because I'm sexy. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't think that 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 that's that's fair. Right. And that's a point that they made that I did agree with. Okay. But you hear dating girls make all these, you know, these subjects. And like, I just don't agree with 99 percent of the stuff that comes out of their mouth because they speak from all of them speak in forms of absolutes. Yeah. And anybody, in my opinion, and that's, this is not me trying to be a dating guru. But anybody that can speak about relationships and absolutes have no clue how relationships work. No. That's a that's a warning flag in my opinion. Yeah. If you can speak about relationships and absolutes, you don't understand the concepts of relationships. The only relationship advice from anybody that I would take are the ones that was like they're not necessarily giving you advice, but they're telling you their experiences. Like, hey, this is where I messed up. This is what I did wrong, but they're taking responsibility themselves. That ne- almost it. never happens. It almost never happens. It almost never happens. All I, every time I see an older woman, I see older women break younger girls in my in my family all the time, younger generations, mm-hmm. and they all all are like ninety percent of no disrespect, but ninety percent of, of the young ladies in my family are single mothers. Yeah. Or they're with they're with a dude that's not the father of their child, and it wasn't necessarily because he was cheating or because he was doing something wrong. The relationship didn't work. And a lot of females in my family, not to be disrespectful, but they be kind of bitchy a little bit. Like, I be seeing them talking to their men any type of way, yelling at their men, cursing about the way in their past relationship. And that's because that's the mentality that was instilled to them that they need to be that way. Yeah. And they were taught from that. Instead of being taught how to be a woman, you know, in the eyes of a man, right? To right. be taught what, do, to be taught how to be a mate for a man. Yeah. They were taught how to protect themselves, and I think that's two completely different things. Yeah. You're 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 making women go into the young women go into the dating space on defense when it shouldn't even have to be like that. Right. Now, again, we live in a different climate where some dudes are crazy is crazy, and you do gotta protect yourself to an extent, like going on your first date in the public space, mm-hmm. not going to his crib, not going to hotels with him for the first date and stuff like that. Not, you know, going out too late and protecting yourself. It's yeah, sad we live in a time, and I, I feel like you gotta do that, but when I say, like, if you're going to actually entertain somebody, you're teaching women to go in their garden as if they're broken. Yeah. You're teaching women to operate as if they're broken, and it's sad because these women gotta unlearn that and they're moving around as if they're broken, and they're not even broken. Yeah, they're just being taught to operate as if they're broken, and it's so unhealthy. And they're being taught that all oh, men is 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 shit, and and um to a lot of the older women are now telling women like get what you can out of a man like that. You should never that should never be your mentality when going into any relationship. Is what can I get from you? What can I get out of this relationship? Yeah. That's not how relationships I, I feel like the only way your mindset should be like that is if you're older, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you like 40-something, 50-something, then you probably want somebody with substance to, to course, spend your time yeah, with. Of course. But if you somebody in your 20s, when I see girls that's in their 20s talking about, oh, he got to be established, he got to have this, he got to have that, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> I remember being 19 years old as a young man wondering what the hell I was doing in my life. Yeah. I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders because I couldn't I couldn't grasp the fact that I didn't have it together. And I was only 19 years old. Yeah. But that came from me hearing women tell the young women around me, mm-hmm. hey, what does he got? Blah, 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 blah. Don't entertain him. Don't entertain him. Blah, blah. He ain't got this. He ain't got this. He ain't going to be nothing. He ain't this. I was like, 19? You fresh out of high school. Like, 
you if if, if you went to college, you ain't even finished college yeah. yet. Like before, what you mean before you ain't got me and you was together. To have nothing. Before me and you was together, I date I dated somebody whose mother told him. She told him. Her, her mother told her like, I I don't think that you should date him. I don't think he'll ever be anything. Like, I, how could you know that at the age of? 15, 16, 17. I was, six, I was 16 years old. How would you know that? I was, But she looked at my circumstances with my family not really helping me, right? And I came from a... It's not like I was in the streets, right? I wasn't gangbanging. I wasn't doing drugs. I had a job and everything. Mm -hmm. But I was struggling because I was trying to figure out... I was I was a 16-year-old. Pretty much, a, I, had a, I had a roof over my head that was provided. But outside of there, it was like, you got to get it. You got to grind. Yeah. You got to pay for your food. You got to pay for your bus pass. You got to pay for your phone, your clothes. You got to get yourself back and forth to school. You back and forth to work. And if all that stops, life stops for you. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, That's the position I was in. Mm -hmm. And I've had an ex mother say like, hey, I don't think he's going to be anything and stuff like that. But this is the advice that I, I see women give. Right. And, and I'm not saying that sometimes women will run into a dude that ain't that ain't nothing or doesn't yeah. ever or doesn't pan they out. They do exist. They, they do exist. Yeah. I'm not going to say and pretend they don't. But but at the same time, you can't go into that with that mindset. Like like the thing is, a lot of times you got to scout and see potential right. in somebody. And I'm not saying get you a bum and try to change him, right? right? That's not potential. That's you trying to change him. Right. When I, when, I, when I say potential, you see somebody like, hey, that's driven. Like, me and you got together. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much. No. I, I, I've never, I've but never I had didn't that. have much. But, but, <laughs> I didn't but, have anything. But, you but, had more than but, I did. But you had a, but you, you but had, had a support a, yeah, system. Yeah, I had a support system. You, you had a home. Your mother was helping you go to college or whatever. People was making sure your books was paid for, that your food, you was good. Now, you was working when you was in college. You made sure you kept groceries in your food. Mm -hmm. But if stuff hit the fan, you knew you can call mommy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, at, but, but, yeah, what was I going with that? I'm sorry. I lost track. Um, oh, but potential. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Yeah, potential. potential, right. But you, even though you was in that circumstance, you gave me a chance. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of people, if they listen to people, they wouldn't be in, they wouldn't be able to meet a dude who pans out like like I did. Mm -hmm. I went from not having nothing to a we, but we we built up to the point where I got my credit right, mm -hmm. and then I said, "Yo, let's get your credit right. Mm -hmm. Let's start putting stuff in your name. Let's 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 do this together. We're a team. Let's get your credit right." Right. The dude who came up with nothing. Let's get your credit right. Right. You, I deployed and I left for six months and I came home and I bought both of us a new car. Right. Both of us, this is the dude who had nothing. Yep. 27 years old, let's go get a house. Yep. Both our names on it. Let's build together. Yep. But what if, what if you had listened to people and was like, yo, he don't come from the best back end with his family. Yep. His family don't support him like that. He, chances are he may not be great. There are women that are missing out on good men, I'm in my opinion, yep. all the time with that mindset. It, it, it's sad. Like, don't get me wrong. Dudes miss out too, right? You got, you got young dudes who mess it up. Can't keep their stuff in their pants. Mm -hmm. and they they talking crazy to the woman. They they ain't got themselves together, or they don't get it, and the woman get fed up and leave. Yep. That does occur. But <clears throat> you got so many dudes. I mean, so many women that are being taught, pretty much like being being pigeonholed into this mindset that just don't make sense to me. It is so many more negative influences, in my opinion, for women than there are for men. Like for men, oh, yeah. all I have to do is keep. If, if, if I keep my son away from gang culture. And violence, and I, 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 I raise him to to appreciate women and treat women with respect and keep his penis in his pants and not dog out women. I feel like my son might be okay. Yeah. But with women, y'all gotta avoid the 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 men, the Steve Harveys. Y'all gotta avoid the women, the Jadas that's telling y'all to go out here and do your thing. Y'all gotta avoid the Meg the Stallions, the Cardi B's. Y'all gotta y'all gotta avoid the the music. Y'all gotta avoid the talk shows. Y'all gotta avoid the women in your family. What? Bro, when I was coming up, I don't know. Like, I heard stories of people's fathers telling them, like, yo, don't get serious too early, blah, blah. I ain't never deal with that. Now, I hear stories about that. You but, said the, what, the, the boy's fathers are telling them that? Yeah. Yeah, my, I, I, uncle, I, I, my I, uncle had told my, my cousins that. Like, I've heard stories. Y'all too young to have one girlfriend and, and all of that stuff. He said that to me and said that to my cousins in front of me and my sisters. And they, like, was telling them, y'all too young to have, to have only one girlfriend. Y'all too young to be tied down. Imagine, they're, like, 16, 17 at this time. And he's like, yeah, go out, explore, and all this other stuff. And I'm like... Man, that stuff is... So, crazy. are you saying... Are you telling us the same thing? Because you're telling them that. 
Are you telling us? And, and, and I, I feel like occasionally, you, I, I, I feel like sometimes you may have that, mm -hmm. but I, I just feel like it's so prevalent. Like when you look on social media, it's so bad with with it. And I feel like women take it so to heart, and they truly believe that. They so vehemently believe that. I see women posting it on social media all day, talking about it, stuff like that. And it's so sad because when I see women, when I see women bashing men, mm -hmm. I feel bad for them. I, I, I feel bad for, for them. the woman or for the man? I feel bad for the woman, not, not the man, whatever. <laughs> I feel bad for the woman because when a woman talks ugly about love, I feel like she never truly experienced it. Yeah. And as somebody who's experienced love, I want that for people. Right. So it, 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 that's why it pissed me off with dating gurus because they give out this advice, these 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 structured arguments in a a, a, a space where it should be great. Mm -hmm. One size doesn't fit all. I feel like they're ruining ruining and preventing people from truly finding love. They are because like like I said, one size is not one size fit all. And you're telling men or you're telling women don't accept this and don't accept that and don't accept this and it's just like. You don't know, like you said, what someone's potential is. Mm -hmm. And what some, how someone might be right now might not be their situation six months from now. Yep. Might not be their situation a year from now. Yep. You Just because someone is not all there or not all put together in that particular moment don't mean they won't be at a later time. Mm -hmm. You know, like we've talked about it before where there was someone who was dating this guy and they're like, oh, he's never going to be nothing. He's never going to have this. He's never going to be successful. successful. He's a mama's boy. He's this, this, and that. And then he turns out and he's like, now making six figures. Yeah. He's now established himself. He yeah. now has a successful career. He now has a family. And this is the person that you walked away from because at that moment that you was dating him, he didn't have it all. Yeah. It's like men don't, men or women, you don't come out the womb with success. And that's, life that's, ain't that's, easy. Life is not easy. Life is not easy. You never know. What's, and then, like, just like how they say, uh, when they were, you know, a, a while back, they was doing the red flag thing on, on Facebook where everybody's like, oh, if, if a guy got this, you're a red flag. If a woman got this, you're a red flag. And one of those things was like, if a man is living with his mom, that's a red flag. And it's like, you never know why that man is living with his you mom. You never know. My brother moved back in with the, my oldest brother, the same one that we were just talking about. That's mm -hmm. my mom's favorite. He moved back in with my mom. And he was living with us for like six months. But you know why? Mm -hmm. He was having a house built. He was having his house built. You know, so that, like you, that's... You never know why someone is living with their people. It, it bothers me. It bothers me to my core because I feel like that mindset is more prevalent amongst our people. Mm -hmm. And I, I hate to sound like I'm going against our people because I'm not. But when the whole, like, if he's staying with his mama, that's a red flag. He's doing this, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> In our culture... Parents can't wait for their kids to turn 18 because that means it's time to pull chalks and kick them out. You got to go. You got to yeah, take off. True. But in other cultures, yo, go to school, come back, get established. You, you, yo, it's other cultures where you'll see two or three generations in the same house. You go, how the hell y'all pulling that off? Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often with our, with, our, with our own. And I'm not saying be a bum, be a mama's boy and stand in the nest. But if you are at home with, with your mom's but you're in college trying to get you a master, uh, or your bachelor's, your yeah, master's, yeah. or whatever, or you about to walk out, doctor, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that somebody should be frowning upon you. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't trying to, you, you better have your little pocket change getting you, you with a job yeah, or something. Course, because yeah. no woman's going to want to, as a man, you you a man, no woman wants to be sneaking in and out your mama's house, right? Yeah, Mommy sleep, let's go to the, let's go sneak in my room or whatever. I understand that. But I, I feel like if that man is going to school and bettering himself and putting him in a position to win, yeah. then y'all should be able to work that out. Hey, you you better go get a, a side hustle, get you some money, get you a part-time job so you can at least pay for hotel rooms, yeah. so you can at least pay for us to go out, so you can at least get yourself a car or something like that. Right. I can see that. But but don't... These, these oh, it's a red flag and blah, blah, blah. You don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. I, I don't I don't like relationship gurus. I don't... I don't really like talking relationships with people because I feel like so many people are speaking from a, a, a stupid standpoint. Yeah. I feel like people don't even... I feel like people don't even understand how relationships work. Yeah. I, I feel like people don't... Don't get it. When you ask somebody why your last relationship didn't work, right? Mm hmm 99% of the time, the person isn't going to say, oh, we weren't compatible. Mm -hmm. They're always going to point to the ex and say the ex did this, they 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 did this. Yeah. 
Yeah. No one ever wants to take accountability for their role. Now, don't get me wrong. We've been really, we some of us have been in relationships where, yo, nah, dog, it wasn't us. It wasn't compatibility. <laughs> she was crazy as hell. I've been in one of those situations where I don't think it was a compatibility issue. I think the girl was just crazy as hell. Yeah. Or she had, not necessarily crazy, has to be insensitive. I thought she had anger issues. Mm-hmm. I thought like she had stuff going on mentally that she needed to take care of. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel like. And she may feel the same way about me. She may feel like I wasn't <clears throat> there, right? Mm-hmm. I, I remember going growing up, I, my family didn't, I never, I didn't really get, my family wasn't a love you family. Yeah. So I had to gradually build up to where I can look at you and say, I love you, yeah. right? That was foreign to me at a point because my mother didn't do that. My father didn't do that when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. That was different. Hugging and kissing and stuff like that. How I do our daughter, that, that was different, yeah. right? So I could see why somebody would look at me and say, hey, you know, they, they may see, say, hey, he wasn't, he wasn't up to par emotionally or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that so comes to people being... He was not much emotionally available. Yeah, he wasn't emotionally available, anything like that. But I feel like a lot of people are selfish and unable to be accountable in the dating space. And I feel like people are super selfish. And that's why I like, I can't get down with dating gurus. I can't get, get down with dating posts. I can't get down with none of that. I don't respect it because I feel like so many people don't have a grasp on relationships or understand how they work. Exactly. It's like a lot of these people that's telling you what you need to have and what you need to look for. And it's like, it's like, have you ever been in a relationship? Have you, have you been in a relationship where all of these things that you're telling men and women that they need to look for, have you done that and it actually worked? Obviously, I haven't because most of these relationship gurus either they're single. they're single or they're being hypocritical. Look at Derek Jackson. You giving women all of these advice, and then it finally comes out that you was cheating on your yo. Wife. Dude was in a video talking about cheaters outside the girl's house that he was cheating with. Like, come on now. And this is supposed to be y'all expert that y'all listening to. And I told women for years, bro. I swear, every time I see one chick in my friends, it's like it'd be different chicks. But every time I see a chick in my friends share that dude, post, I say, yo, why do y'all keep sharing that dude post? Like, I can spot that dude. That dude is a cheater. I can see that that dude is a dog, bro. Yeah. Oh, even if he's not a dog, he's selling you a dream. Yeah, I he's never, selling you a dream. I don't think I can honestly say I don't think I've watched. Any of his videos. It's a chick that does that for dudes now. She's the female Derek Jackson. Um, her name's like Roma or something like that. I wouldn't know. I know her YouTube is like Roma Army or something like that. She does like the no dick or like with a Q uh, series or something like that where l- ladies, if he don't, I mean, fellas, if she don't do this, blah, blah, no no penis. If she don't do this, blah, blah, no penis. She's the Derek Jackson. And dudes in her comments eating it up. Now, she did recently lose her fan base. <clears throat> it was hilarious because... <laughs> Of course, she can't. It, so it came. If it, it was a uh, reveal that she was bisexual, okay. And the reason why we found out she was bisexual because she posted a picture of her and her girlfriend. Okay. Everybody turned to her so fast. <laughs> All those simps that was loving it turned to her so fast. But we do have. I have to give. I have to give credit where it's due. I got to be fair. We do have a Derek Jackson female version in the space, and it's crazy watching it operate. But yeah, I tell people all the time, like, bro, like when it's like, it was, like when I talk to my friends, whatever about their relationships, though. Mm-hmm. And they explain stuff to me. I always ask them, like the first question I always ask them, like, did you talk to this person about it? Like I, I can I can hear what your significant other is doing and I can frown upon that. I don't know y'all whole situation. I don't know what you tell me. But I can't speak in absolutes and say, oh, you definitely need to leave. You need to do this, you need to do that. Yeah. The first thing I always tell somebody something about something about the relationship is I will never judge you for what you do. If you stay with this person, I support it. If you yeah. break with this person, I support it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is, did you talk to your person about this? Right. And if you didn't, y'all need to talk to y'all need to figure this out. Right. You can come to me for all the advice in the world, but y'all need to communicate. Right. Y'all need to figure out what works best for y'all relationships. Right. And gurus because don't what, say that. Yeah, because what, what I might do might not necessarily be what you want to do. Exactly. How I handle the situation might not be how you want to handle the situation. But you know, gurus don't do that. But no, they don't do that. They gurus be like, yo, you need to leave him. this is what you need to do. <laughs> and then I'm going to give you step two. You come by my, when you come over here to my Discord and you buy my book for, for $29.99. <laughs> and in, in chapter 12, I'm going to tell you, you what to you do. You need to have a session with me. You need to have a session with me. <laughs> book a consultation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because that, that's, that's the other thing too. Like, that's why, like, when you see on social media, but somebody be like, oh, my husband and my wife, they did this, 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 and this. What should I do? And the first thing people say, oh, you need to leave that person. You need to leave that person. And it's like, why is that always the first thing, that the advice that you give? That's Dumb. the reason why the divorce rates are so high is because the first thing y'all telling somebody to do when there's the slightest incident is y'all need to leave that You need person. to leave, you need to leave, you need to leave. And it's like, you don't always have to leave, especially when you're married. Because when you're married, 
you just can't get up and leave. That's a whole different ballgame. Sure. But you're in a relationship and y'all just dating, it's like, okay, you can leave whenever you want to. But when you're in a marriage, you have vowed your life to mm-hmm. this other person. You, you're saying that the, no matter what we have, whatever, no matter what obstacles is put in front of us, we are going to stay together. We're going to work this thing out. Mm-hmm. So your first thing should not be is to leave whenever y'all have a rough patch. Because with marriages, you're going to have them constantly. Yeah. There's always going yeah, to be something. Yeah, you, 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 one person feel like they're working harder than another. Yes. Other, they, one person feel like the other person isn't pulling their weight or this person doesn't isn't showing me love or this person isn't... We're, we're not doing this, right? It, yeah, it could be communication. Any, it could be communication. It could be anything that could be a problem in yeah. the relationship. And it's like, I mean, just take our relationship, for instance. We've had our fair share of mm-hmm. issues over the years. We've been together 13 years, been married for nine. We've had our fair share. Yeah. We've been well, through the ring. Yeah, we, we've, been, we've had times where we like, damn, like, this don't feel like a relationship. Or yeah. this, you know, like when, you, when the fire goes out and you got to reignite it. Yeah, and we could easily be like, yo, I'm done. Let's walk away. But <clears throat> sometimes you got to work through those rough patches where you may not even feel like you're in love anymore. Right. And, and work to even get back to that point. Right. Like when we when I was working mid-shift overnights and stuff like that, we became roommates. Yeah. Because I was asleep. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I was exhausted. I didn't feel like myself. Yeah. And I was working overnights for 11 months yeah. straight. And it's like we barely went anywhere because, like you said, you was... During the day, you were sleeping because you had to get up at night. Yeah. And then on the weekends, it's like you want to just chill because you've been at work all week. Uh, yeah, and I so want to maintain like, my sleep schedule. I don't want to break my sleep schedule and do so during the day. So exactly. Yeah, so on. that whole time that you was on me, it's like we didn't, we barely went out and did yeah. anything. If we did do something, it was like a little small stuff. Like we didn't really and it took enjoy a our marriage. And this was like at the beginning of our marriage. We was newlyweds at this point. It was like about, about almost about two years. Uh, no, because remember, I was day shift and then I was swings and then I was mids after that. But I did you, you on days for your first like few months, yeah, because you brand new and then you go to swings and they only switch it quarterly. So I would have been on, I wouldn't have been on mids for at least nine months to a year, yeah, in the beginning, but we were still technically, yeah, but we was, you know, still yeah. first year of our, our marriage, you know, and so like we are already lost. A couple of months with you being I deployed, away. I deployed and, for six months. Yeah, and all that. So, see, we had already lost a couple of months. So, it was like, it it, it took a toll on yeah. our relationship yeah. because it was like, we we wasn't really, we didn't have that connection mm-hmm. that we should have had. So, it did take a, a toll. But we didn't just say, you know what, it's not working, wipe our hands and walk away. Yeah. We did, now, we did go to blows and we thought we was going to end it. Yeah, we, we did. did go to blows. But who, who, what marriage don't go yeah, through that? Where, yeah. you know, especially Not physical blows. I don't go to jail. <laughs> I've never raised my hand to this woman. Yeah, but and then they, they always tell you, you know, the first, like, seven years is the hardest. I didn't know that. I thought, I thought it was the first uh, two no, they say like the first seven years is like the hardest. But I, I didn't have mentorship. I just I've been just free balling. Yeah. <laughs> I've been spitballing and throwing stuff at the wall two sticks for my whole life. But but yeah, so it's like we you know we didn't just wash our hands. Even though there were times we could have done that, but we didn't. We could we talked to each other. We figured out what our issues were, and we grew yeah. together. And I mean, in my personal opinion, I think we're better now than we was a year ago. We're better now than we was two three years ago. I agree. You know. Um, but I, I would say we were probably as strong as we've ever been, honestly. Now, yeah, I think I think we're as strong as we, in my opinion, you yeah, may feel different. No, I agree with that. I, I, I was just like telling uh, one of our friends that, like, I think we're net so much closer now than we used to be, mm-hmm. and it's like that's because we work at our relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people could have said, "Hey, you need to leave," or "He needs to leave," or whatever. A lot that's of people thought of that, but it's like. No, because that's not what that's not what we signed up for. Mm-hmm. When we got in this relationship, we said that we was gonna stick it out through, you know, to death do us part. And that's what that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna continue to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it gets ever gets to the point where we just can't reconcile, then that's one thing. Yeah. But if you can, you should always try to make that effort. Yeah. I, I, I don't think people understand that. I and mean, that's how I like like once again, when you hear these relationship girls, bro, seriously, they don't know what they're talking about. No. And then don't come to me. Don't come to me, right? I'm not a relationship guru. I can't guide you either. I, I can tell you what I would do, but I can't guide you. I will never sit up here and tell people this is what you need to do 
if in the dating space, this is exactly. what you need to do. Exactly. This, this, it, it, it's not one size fit all. Right. That's just my advice. So you hear people telling you, you know, I, I've heard, you know, certain people say, yo, you got to be on the defense when you want to hit up with these people, bro. That's just not how that works, bro. Yeah, no. And I'm not saying that the dating game. Selfish. Yeah, I, I'm not saying the dating game hasn't changed since I've been out. But trust me, the stuff that, that you guys are talking about, bro, just put yourself in the other person's shoes. A lot of stuff, the advice that you're taking from these dating gurus, if you was on the other side, you wouldn't be a fan of it. You wouldn't go for it. No. So why would you even go into a child? Exactly. No, don't. It ain't that serious. So that, that, that um, I guess we kind of hit on it a little bit. We, we can we can be quick with this. I want to get this over with because we're at an hour 15. Okay. Uh, why do you think relationships struggle so much in this climate? My relationship struggle. Yeah. Um, I see this all the time on Facebook. I just, I'm curious what you think. Yeah. I, so we talked about relation. You know, people giving up too easily. That's definitely one thing. But uh, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of, and this, this is not saying that men don't do this, but it's mostly the women that's doing this nowadays. Is everything is about what can you do for me? Mm. You know, what do you bring to the table? Like, and it's, and it's, it, it, it that bothers me because I'm like. It's not always just about what somebody else can do for you. You need to be able to bring something to the table, too. Your looks ain't going to get you everything. Teamwork makes the dream work. I try to tell people that. Yes. Because when, yeah, I can provide and take care of us. Yeah. I did it the first year after you had a Naya. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, your extra income is definitely dope. <laughs> it definitely makes a difference. It is definitely it? makes a difference. <laughs> when you're working, I can feel the difference from when you're not working financially. <laughs> when I'm looking at the bills and the bank account, I'm going... All right, bro, what, I'm fin what stock am I going to flip this week? What crypto am I going to flip this week? I got to get some damn money. But it's a huge difference. difference. But, the diff but also, not even just that. The difference, too, is a lot of these women, they don't want to work. They mm -hmm. don't want to put in the work. What our situation is like, if I, so, because I took the first year off after mm -hmm. I was born. I didn't work for a year. Mm -hmm. So, but if I wanted to work, I could do that because I have the credentials to do that. I have the opportunities to do that. Mm -hmm. I have, you know. I have things put aside to where if whatever happens with you, I can take over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I We're in that type and, of situation. And I, I think that's the thing. I'm sorry to cut you off. I, I, I agree with you. I think that's the thing. Like, it's not that you need to work, right? Right. It's, it's not that women have to work no. and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with wanting a provider. Mm -hmm. But... We get into scary territory when it's a when you put yourself in a position where if something was to happen to that man, mm -hmm. your only bet would be to jump ship. Yeah. The, the ship is sinking. You ain't got a paddle. You ain't got a life jacket. And, and that's a metaphor for you ain't went to school. You got no degree. You have no work history. Yo, you can't even knit and sell us some damn fur, sell some damn fur babies on, on Amazon if we need you to. You can't do a damn thing. Yeah, I think that's scary territory. Yeah. And I understand people say, yo, taking care of children is a full-time job, but that's the, the route you want to take. I'm, we're not frowning upon stay-at-home mothers. No, not at all. But, I've done, like I did, like I said, I did it for a year and it's not easy. Yeah, but I agree with you that people, it, it sounds like, okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to tell you what you're saying. What, 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 to conclude, what are you saying as far as the the why the relationship struggle? You was going on that kind of interfere with what you was going on. Yeah, no. So I was just saying like a lot of. Are you saying like why relationship struggle in the beginning, or like why people aren't staying together anymore? Why aren't people staying together? Is what I'm getting at. Uh, okay, so I was going a little bit different with that. You was um, going what, why they struggle in the beginning? Yeah. Okay. So okay, okay. why relationships aren't staying together anymore? Um. Honestly, I don't know. It's kind of weird because it's like, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to take a guess, right? Okay. I don't want to speak to absolutes. And I'm not going to be long-winded because I've been long-winded all night. <laughs> um, I think it's selfishness. I can see that. Yeah, from what I gauge off of online, right? Mm -hmm. This is all I can do. I can only gauge what people around me are posting and stuff like that that I see. Or the people that I talk to in real life. I think selfishness is the leading cause of relationships not lasting. Okay, yeah, so that's kind of so, so close to what I was saying. Yeah, people people say, oh, well, I'm not my grandparent. I'm not my grandma. I'm not my grandfather, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's the case. I think that people, we live in such a get it now. Mm -hmm. Get now, 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 now. Mm -hmm. People 
in this generation value instant gratification probably more than any generation ever. Yeah. Because of the social social media has sped up everything, right? Oh, yeah. So like 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 with investing, mm-hmm. people used to be happy with a five percent return over a year. Mm-hmm. But now as somebody like myself in crypto, my account can move 10% and overnight and I don't care. Show me 200%. When my account double, I want 100%. I, I want my $50,000 to turn into a million. That's what makes me happy, right? We live in a generation where we all want instant gratification. Mm-hmm. We all we all want it. We don't we don't want to deal with the it. storm. We don't want to work for it. We don't want to do that. And we also not only that, people have the mindset where if they don't get 100% of what they want, 100% of the time, then they're not happy. Yeah. They're not happy. I agree with that. I, I, I want it my way all the time. Yo, you ain't doing this, this, and this, and this every single day. Mm-hmm. We got a problem. Me and you even have had conversations where I say, hey, I don't I don't need you to be superwoman every day. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just need us. I, I, I need us to focus on, you know, just, just being, let's not forget about the love between us. Right. At least multiple times out the week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. And if you have a bad week, you have a bad week. I have a bad week. I have a bad week. We good. We bounce back. Right. But I don't want us to have months where it just doesn't feel like love because we didn't get preoccupied with life. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. A lot of people have a hard time finding balance and understanding that. That's the give and take. I understand you don't feel good every single day. Right. Right. And I understand that you want to be left alone. You want your space sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I get in my mood. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Especially, yeah. especially since I got so much medical stuff going on right now. Sometimes I'll be, I'll be down for them. Like, yo, I don't want, really want to do anything. I got too much medical stuff going on. I got, like, I'm in pain, blah, blah, blah. I can't do nothing. Just, I, I don't know. I'm just sitting here. I want to be in my own space. Yeah. You know, that comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be selfish and be like, yo, you can't do what I want every single day. I'm a dip. But you got people that's like that. I've, I've seen posts of young ladies saying, hey, if he ain't texting, text you in six hours, ain't no excuse. He should hit you back. They like, damn, even if he got a job, no, no excuse. People text all day. He can text you while he at work. No. Stuff like yeah, that. Especially because you don't even know what type of job they have, what type of work they're doing. They could be in meetings all day. You know, you never yeah, know what somebody's doing. It's that instant gratification. And I, I think that people want 100% of what they want 100% of the time. And when they don't get it, they're unhappy. Yeah. And I think that's the leading cause. I could be wrong, right? I'm not a dating guru. I'm not an expert. I haven't gone to school for this. But that's just what I've observed and how I've interpreted it. From what the way I see things. No, I mean I think I, I can agree with that though because you know there are people out here that's just like you know I I want this I want that I want this I want that and there is no there's no give or take there's mm-hmm. no no negotiation there you know everything is all about me 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 what I want what I want and we don't you know they don't care about what somebody else wants or what somebody else is going through or somebody else's feelings mm-hmm. it's always just about what they want yeah and it's like that's not that's not how relationships work. Relationships, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Yep. Sometimes you have to, you know, barter with each other about, okay, well, if you don't want to do it this time, maybe we can do this or maybe we could do it at another time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's how relationships are. But yeah, I, I agree with that. Nowadays, just like everyone is just like, you know, you need to satisfy me 100%. And if, and if you're not satisfying me 100%, then screw you. I don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah, people, people take their love and, and they hold it hostage. Mm-hmm. People go, yo, if you don't do this, I won't do this. Yep. If you ain't paying all the bills and doing all, I'm not having sex with you. Yeah. If you're not doing this, this, and this, I'm gonna talk to you any type of way. People take their love and they hold it hostage and they treat people like crap. Yeah. And I, I don't harp on it too long. We we going into the last topic. It's kind of similar to this topic. Okay. Um, if you could pick one thing, okay. one, oh, Lord. one, in your opinion, for you, not the world, for you, for me, what is the most important thing in a relationship to you? Loyalty. Explain. Quick, quick explanation. I want someone that... Not too quick. I don't want to rush you that hard. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not long with it like you. Oh. You're right. <laughs> um, but no, I want someone who's down for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That no, no matter what, no matter what I'm going through, even if I'm like just wanting to vent, that I know that you're going to have my back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, you know, I just, I, that's, one of the most important things to me is because like I've dealt with um, people that was not loyal to me mm-hmm. and that like kind of like stabbed me in the back. Mm-hmm. So that's why loyalty is really important to me because it's like, you know, I, I know how that feels when someone don't have your back mm-hmm. and they chose other people over you, even though you was 
you've been in their life longer. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been their rock, but they they're not yours. And um, that it bothered me. So it's like for me, it's like I want someone that I know that I can depend on. So I know someone that I can trust that is that's gonna have my back when I need them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just how I am. I don't know. Uh, I've I've been stabbed in the back. I've been hurt too many times. Mm -hmm. So it's like I need to know that that person is gonna hold me down. Period. I respect, so, I respect that. I, I respect. trust you to be that person. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, if I had to say for myself, what would be the most important uh, thing in a relationship? Mm -hmm. uh, mine is compatibility. Okay. Uh, I think having having compatibility with somebody is so deep yeah. and it's so broad. Yeah. Having a similar moral compass. So when you talk about loyalty, right, and yeah. you want somebody to don't cheat on you, cheat on you. I feel like that's a compatibility thing because that's something that you want. And I feel like the other person would, would want similar things, right? So yeah. that y'all, you would share that, right? Right. Um, having similar interests. Mm -hmm. Somebody that you can pick up and go like, hey, like you you was one of the first, I think you were, no, you were one of the first girls that I met that will sit down and play video games. Like, I've met girls that will pick up the controller because I say, hey, I play games. And they go, you who just started dating, I pick up a controller and act like I play the game, right? Yeah. But me and you have sit down, sat down and beat a whole game together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We've sat down and played Legos and all these other different games together mm -hmm. and beat them. <clears throat> right? That's compatibility. We have things in common. Right. Hey, uh, uh, we'll sit down and watch the playoffs together. You sit down and watch the basketball game mm -hmm. and recognize the players and we'll laugh and joke and talk about the players and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Compatibility is huge, in my opinion, because it's such a broad spectrum. The moral compass, the 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 things that we like to do together, us being able to conversate and talk. Me, me and you like a lot of similar stuff. Yeah. And then a lot and of we times have some of the same like um ideology as well. Yeah, like, ideologies. Or, or like it's dope that like like you may not you may not even know about something. I can find out something, like find out about a show. Like I've always liked anime, yeah. but also like what you would call a, a casual anime person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I watched the basics, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto. Uh, whatever came on Toonami, that was my stuff. But outside <laughs> that, I never did research yeah. as a kid growing up, right? right? But I can come to you and be like, yo, I saw this fire anime or whatever. And we'll sit down and watch the whole the series mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I think compatibility is really, really important because everything is going to fade. Yeah, The looks is going to fade. The the, the physical is going to fade, right? We, we're we going to eventually get so old that we ain't going to be able to have sex. <laughs> we're going to eventually get that old where we can't be intimate and do physical things. We can't go ride bikes. We can't go run up the street. We can't go to the gym. We're going to eventually get so old that all we're going to have is each other and each other's yep. company and conversation. Yep. And compatibility, in my opinion, is important, right? When I'm sitting down and we're, we're, we spend our last 10 years of life together, we, we sit on a porch being old as hell talking on the, and giving yeah, each other conversation. Sure. I think compatibility is very, very important. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, it is because it's like you want to be with someone that you can connect with on a deeper level. Yeah. You don't want someone that you're you're with them just because they look good. Because like you said, looks ain't good. A ain't lot good of thing. people, I think a lot of people are doing that and they're going to be mm -hmm. mad as hell in about 20, 30 yeah. years. And then it's like, like, yo, this, they ain't even cute no more. I can't say because huh? like, you know, a lot of these, a lot of not, you know, not all of them, but a lot of women who, or a lot of men too, who have our, our really good looks, it's a lot of it's artificial if you ask me. It's you know? artificial. All it's that makeup and stuff like that. And it's like, eventually you're going to get tired of that. You doing it's, that. It's it's going to fade. It's going yeah, to fade. Going to fade. You can so put makeup like, on all you want. You can do all you want. Eventually yeah. it's all gonna fade. And same I mean, with the men. I mean, same with the men. Makeup, but same with the men. Yeah. You can get your dude that's all swole, brawly, six pack, muscles all here. But when when dude get old and he can't lift no more, he can't yeah. do that, and it all start to soften up a little bit. I hope that you like him. Yeah. I hope that yeah, you exactly. like him and enjoy him as a person because at the end of the day, that's all you're going to fall. That's why if you notice, I, I don't know if you knew this. What? Divorce rates went through the roof when COVID kicked off. Yeah, I mean, that's how I said people, A lot of people found out they weren't compatible <laughs> with each other having to sit in the house with each other for 24 hours a day. A day. They, they were sitting in the house realizing, damn. I do not like you. <laughs> I hate your fine ass. Fine as hell, but I cannot stand you. Get out. Please. Yeah, it's it's not all about looks, man. It's like it's it's really not like yeah. Do you want someone that you're attracted to? Of course, yes. you definitely want to be attracted to the person that you're with because 
you know, it might be hard to connect with that person if you're not attracted to them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the phrase beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That phrase is so true because you can look at some like and I see this all the time where there's a, a woman or a man who have the nastiest attitude. But people, everybody's like, oh, my God, that person is so fine, so fine, so fine. But they have the nastiest attitude, and that attitude will make them look so ugly to you. Yo, that's, that's how I feel about JT from the City Girls. Yo, uh, pe <laughs> people think she is so fine. Mm -mm. Yo, Shorty is so nasty. Like, don't get me wrong. I didn't find her attractive physically anyways. Yeah. But she is such a nasty person, and it makes her so disgusting to me. Like, like yeah. so sick. Yeah, She's it, disgusting. It's like it, it, those, those <clears throat> things like that, it, it makes someone that's really, really pr pretty it makes them look ugly because it's how they talk, how they act and things like that. So it's like, you want to make sure that you're not only with someone that you're attracted to, but someone that's going to bring substance to your life. Yeah. Someone that you can talk to, you enjoy having them in your company because the most unattractive person, if you enjoy the company, you enjoy the personality and who they are, they might become the finest person to the end world to you. Yo, well, our freshman year of high school, it was some dude, I don't know his name to this day, dude was cross-eyed, <laughs> I did not understand what the girls was like on him for, but they was on his heels. <laughs> he was slaying them. And then I heard he was a really cool dude. That's probably what it was. <laughs> I have no idea. Bro probably was cool. He probably had a good mouthpiece. He probably had a great, amazing personality. <laughs> because, yeah. Is that is that considered a condition? Can I not say that? I don't know. I don't know. Is that a condition? I don't know. Is that... Because all the all the cross eye means is that the muscle in the eye is too strong or too weak. That's all it is. If it's if it's too strong, I think it pulls it in. Yeah. And then if it's too weak, it just sort of like you get a wanderer. I, I think. Yeah, that's I, what it is. I honestly I don't know if they consider it a condition or not. I don't even know if they have a like a medical term because you know everything has a medical term. Cross eye. That's my medical so term. I, I don't know if there's even a medical term cross for it. So I don't know if it's condition. Cock eye. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean but that that's how it is though like I've seen some of the like not necessarily I, w I don't want to say the word ugly because not every you know everybody's not ugly it's just yeah, I, some people are just not attractive and I've seen did you say people, everybody's not ugly some people are not ugly yeah you don't, you don't believe they're ugly people I think that they're just unattractive they're, you don't think no one's ugly I don't, I don't necessarily think like people are ugly. I just think that they're not. We are getting sidetracked, but I kind of like this. You say nobody's ugly. You don't think you are ugly? No. More power to you. I, I, don't, I, I don't agree. I, I mean, you might not agree, but I say that only because like just because someone is not attracted to me. Yeah. Don't necessarily mean that that person is not is, is not attracted. Somebody else is not attracted to them. So that's why I say I don't think people are ugly is because. You know, there might be someone that's attracted to that person. So who am I to say, oh, that person? So you ain't ugly. never seen a person that was so ugly that it was kind of cute. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never seen like you ain't watch a cartoon, right? You see a little monster, like it's kind of cute. I mean, I guess. Ugly is a real thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that I don't. I okay. Maybe let me rephrase. You could low key be ugly, sexy. Like you could pull it off. <laughs> Work. Please tell me how does that people work. People used to say Biggie was sexy. R.I.P. No disrespect to the dead, but people used to say Biggie I was mean, sexy. I mean, I wouldn't say he's sexy, I, but I'm not attracted to him, so... People? If there are people that think he's sexy, that's people that he thinks he's sexy. I, who am I to say that, that you know... Okay, I don't not. care if he's sexy. I'm not trying to say he's not sexy, right? I'm not going to argue Biggie that, sexy or not. I'm just saying, who am I to say that this person is I not? think that people can't be ugly. I think ugly is, is for sure a thing. I think that you can see something and say, I'm not attracted to that person, Yes. but I could see why somebody sees them as attractive. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think there's a difference between between recognizing attraction and being attracted to, mm -hmm. but I also think ugly is a thing, right? So you so, so, so like, like, like even even like I, I I'm comfortable with my sexuality, mm -hmm. but let's say if your friend said, "Yo, I I I think Eddie cool as hell," because Eddie has some homeboys that he can he can put me on with. Mm -hmm. I got about three homeboys that I'm not hooking nobody <laughs> up because they're ugly as hell. And I got three homeboys that I'm like I'm not attracted to them, but I can see why girls will find them attractive. So you said so those three homeboys you said that you wouldn't you you wouldn't hook nobody up with. You think that every day and in the eye of everybody they're ugly to everybody. I think they're objectively ugly and that. So you think there's no. And I think that some people can look past those features and find the attractiveness in them. That is so messed up.
That's so messed up. I think ugly is a real thing. I mean, I, like I said, who am I to say somebody is ugly? I might not be attracted to You don't have to call them ugly, right? You don't have to say it. Somebody might look at me and say, hey, he ugly. They might think I'm ugly. That's Someone's fine. Someone's told me that before. What? Someone's told me that before. That I'm ugly? When we first started, well, before me and you started dating, when we was in that talking phase. Who said I was ugly? I ain't telling you that. Tell me. <laughs> are, they still in your, are they still around you? No, they're not. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I can cook them. <laughs> I mean, but I ain't gonna stunt though. Like, when we first started dating, I ain't have my stuff together. I was kind of broken bummy. I mean, yeah, but, you know. You, Did you just agree I'm broken bummy? <laughs> no, but you're not having your stuff together. Uh, I but, that. I mean, your face has matured a lot too since. So, what are you trying to say? You used to have a baby face. Are you agreeing that I was ugly? No, I'm not saying you're ugly. I'm just saying. I was gonna say, because then you. you I'm not, I don't care if you thought I was ugly, but I was gonna say, like, then you agree with my point. If I thought that you was ugly, do you think I would have dated you? You could have saw the attractiveness there. You could have said I'm, he's ugly, but there are certain attractive features about him. I would not have dated someone that I was not attracted to. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I had to have been attracted to. I you. guess. If I, you I remember, guess. I sought you out. You didn't seek me out. Uh, I guess. Mostly, I mostly sought you out. All right. So if I was not attracted to you, I would not have done that. I wonder who thought I was ugly. I'm not I, I feel like I feel like low key. It's probably somebody that shot they shot before too. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. You highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. Highly doubt they shot they shot. I highly doubt it. I'm trying to think. I'm I mean, trying I to think. Probably guess who it is. And they, I think they but tried at the to shoot same they time, shot. I didn't have that many friends in high school. I, I probably could. I probably could guess it. Is this somebody that look like a bird? She like a bird? No. <laughs> thing is I know who you're talking about but no. There was two of them. You had one friend like a bird, you had another one like Tweety Bird. Like Tweety Bird? Yeah, one I ain't gonna say her name on camera but she like Tweety Bird. Okay, I, 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 like I wanted to beat up her boyfriend for lying on me. Okay, I know you're talking about. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. She looks like Tweety Bird. I know who you're talking about. She looks like Tweety Bird but, and I feel like um, a bird. <laughs> no comment. But no, it wasn't them. No, it wasn't. All right, cool. That's fine. I don't care. I don't care. They can think I'm ugly. All right. That's the first episode of the podcast. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm sleepy as hell. So I'm going to have to end this abruptly before I fall asleep. <laughs> I'm about to pass out. I'm exhausted. It is 11.30 p.m. Yes, it is late over here in the awesome island of Okinawa. Yeah, so we got to get about it. Do you have anything else you want to give to the people before we roll? Nope. I think I'm good to go. All right. So if you like the podcast, um, please leave a like. Comment, subscribe. If there's anything that you want us to talk about, leave that in the comment section, yes. and we'll try to go through those and address any topics that we want to talk about. Yeah, ain't no problems. Just if if, if we we'll, if we'll rock with the topic <laughs> and it don't make it on the show, I'm sorry. Sometimes stuff do slip through the cracks. Yeah, but if it, if it don't make it on the show, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing personal. Just you know, shoot another topic or something like that on it. But if we do take your topic, you will get credit for it. We're not gonna take your topic and uh, just rock with it for exactly. free content. Right. So uh, if you ain't got nothing else. You good? Yep. All right. If you maintain this video, thank you for your time. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out. Chief. Yeah. That was a good episode.